Welcome back to On the Issues. I'm District 8 Councilwoman Kate Gallego. Phoenix recently had the honor of hosting an international graffiti expo featuring experts in the field and the latest gadgets to wipe out graffiti. Here's a look inside. Welcome to Zero Graffiti International here. We're here with the founder of Stop Urban Blight, Drew, who's gonna tell us a little bit about his background. Hey, yeah, four years ago, our nonprofit organization um, formed a group and held conferences locally. And then we went from there to having our first international conference last year in San Francisco. And then Phoenix expressed interest because we had one of your uh, detectives speak at our conference and expressed interest in having it in Phoenix. And Phoenix has an excellent program and we thought it'd be a great venue to have it. So this year we're having our conference in Phoenix. We have people attending from Australia, um, from London, from uh, Canada, and they're really excited to learn about the Phoenix program and network with each other and share ideas about what's working in the field of graffiti abatement. Wonderful, thank you for choosing our city for your conference. It's great to learn from others. We pride ourselves as trying to make sure we understand the best of what's going on elsewhere and continuously improving in our fight against graffiti. Yeah. Could you tell us a little bit about some of the products that are out there to help us with graffiti prevention? And sure. One of the things that we felt was important to have at the show was uh, exhibitors, so they could share their products some about some of the new innovations that are out here. Um, one of the companies that's an exciting company is a Q-Star Technology that has a voice-activated camera. If somebody's in the area, it actually sends out a message and takes their picture to let them know that they shouldn't be there to stop what they're doing. Um, also, we found that uh, murals and art a lot of times will deter vandalism because we feel that if you have graffiti with permission, it's not vandalism. It's when they do it randomly with vandalism that it's, it's an issue. So um, there's a company here called Clean Slate Group that actually has wraps that they can put around utility boxes that looks um, very nice, and they also have a graffiti-resistant film on it, so if it does get tagged, it's easily cleaned off. Wonderful, so it gives us a sense to share a little bit about our community, maybe put images on there that tell our story in addition to fighting graffiti. Right, and many artists will submit ideas that they can put onto these things, so it gives it a local feel, mm -hmm. so it's not just random artwork, but it's something with the community, so it gives them a sense of pride. Wonderful, we can celebrate some of the things that are unique from each neighborhood to exactly each right. neighborhood. Yeah. How would you say Phoenix is doing in fighting graffiti? I'd say you're near the top. They, I mean, there was, there's been a lot of cities that were looking forward to coming here because you do have a, a good program, and that's why we did the first day graffiti abatement A to Z in the city of Phoenix. So you had, we had the entire board, of, not board, but members of your city that were up there dealing with it, from William Hogan's, who runs the Blight Program, who received a Graffiti Fighter Award this year for 2013, as well as Detective Mike Kaditz, who uh, received a Graffiti Fighter Award as well for their excellent work. Great. And could you give us a sense of how big is this problem? What's the economic impact of graffiti? Huge. Uh, last number we heard from last year was $25 billion was being spent across the country dealing with graffiti vandalism, and that doesn't include private property. Wonderful. And we really pride ourselves on supporting entrepreneurs and small businesses. So if you, would you give advice to folks who are thinking about starting a business to help deal with graffiti? What's available? What would you recommend they focus their efforts on? I don't know about businesses necessarily, but what is really key is volunteers and community members getting involved with cleanup. And that's a big part of your city's program is mm -hmm. the uh, volunteers, and that would be a big part there. As far as businesses, it's, it's hard to say. There are a number of graffiti removal service businesses, so it's hard to recommend one over the other, that kind of thing. Drew, thank you for coming to Phoenix and for all the work you've spent during your career trying to fight graffiti and gr get us to zero graffiti. We're glad you came to our city. We're glad to have you as a partner and hope we'll continue to work with you over the years to come. And now we're gonna learn a little bit more about what's happening in Phoenix and some of our efforts. I'm here with Adela Torres from our City of Phoenix Neighborhood Services Department. Could you tell us what you do? I work for the City of Phoenix Graffiti Busters Program. I am Graffiti Busters Foreman. I am the actually only female Graffiti Busters Foreman. Wonderful. Well, thank you for making history <laughs> in our Graffiti Busters Program. It's exciting for me to interview you on my first show as a councilwoman, as the first councilwoman to represent District 8. So hopefully this will be the beginning of a long partnership. And thank you for your long service to our city. Since you have that longer perspective, could you tell us what it was like when you began working in the Graffiti Busters program, how we dealt with the problem and what tools we had available, and then tell us a little bit more about what we do here today? Well, I have been with the graffiti program for approximately 23 years, 
And when we first started, um, I was the first female graffiti buster. Um, and we had, um, we used one color paint and we had a sprayer and uh, we just went out removing graffiti. Um, and it wasn't quite that much and the city was a lot smaller. And uh, but compared to now, uh, we've really grown. We've grown to, um, we have like 12 graffiti crews that go out and we work, we have a seven day operation. And um, we, um, we've just, uh, Growing from um, just using sprayers to power washing, color matching equipment, uh, just state-of-the-art technology. We use a certain uh, piece of equipment, it's called a spectrophotometer, that we use to color match certain colors because we carry basic wall colors, you know, the whites and the grays and the tans. However, when you come across a specially colored wall, we use a spectrophotometer, which takes a picture of the color, and we store it in a little computer and we take it down and we download it and it prints out a formula for us and we're able to color match uh, perfectly with that unit. Wow, we've come a long way since using just one color. That's very exciting. So we're here at Graffiti International and learning what other communities are doing. Are we using the best tools available? Absolutely, we are. We're, we have uh, one of the best programs. A lot of, uh, we've had a lot of uh, the participants come to us and ask us for advice and, and what actually what products we're using and what systems we have in place. And they're, they're, ten, they're going towards mirroring our program, actually. Um, so we're quite pleased with that. And plus, we've learned a lot here as well. Um, there's a lot of uh, points that, uh, pointers that came up that, you know, we picked up a few things on how we're going to do our operations just a little better, how we can make it better. Wonderful. And congratulations. You were recognized. The, the program was recognized with an award, so that's great to hear. Appreciate all of our city's employees' work into getting us that award, and to help people understand why we won that award, could you tell us sort of how big the program is and how often you're responding to incidents? Well, we're removing around 75,000 sites, graffiti sites a year. We're receiving around 20,000 calls, so we have a, a good response from the community. Uh, the community can just call our our hotline number, and actually, it's a basic department number. It's a uh, 602-534-4444. They can just call that number, 24 hours, 24 hotline. Well, thank you to your team for working on the weekends and really following up quickly. It's a big problem and we want to send a strong message to people that we don't tolerate graffiti, we want safe communities, we're going to follow up and we appreciate our, our partners on the ground and our volunteers especially. So could you tell us a little about the role of volunteers and how people can get involved? Volunteers are very important to our program. They give up their free time, their weekends, to, to combat graffiti in their neighborhoods. Um, we give them tools they need. Uh, sometimes we give them areas. Sometimes they just want to give up a weekend, a group of people. We, for example, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, we want to combat graffiti. Okay, so we have certain areas, that, that some certain areas that we can't go into because of our equipment. It's difficult, so we save those sites for the uh, for the volunteers and they'll go in we give them the tools they need and they um, remove the graffiti and they always do a beautiful job. Wonderful. Well, thank you for working with our volunteers and for the work your department does. It's great for Phoenix to be recognized and we'll work to continue to improve. And now we're going to go back to the studio. Coming up next, a celebration in the Garfield Historic District. Keep watching on the issues.